This week on TGC News, Bergara has a new fancy bolt gun, new boomsticks from Nemo and EAA, and a 3D printed gun tuber of the week. Just because I'm addicted to caffeine does not mean that I have to settle for sh coffee. Blackout coffee. F yeah. To get 10% off your entire order, go to blackoutcoffee.com and use the code TGC. That's blackoutcoffee.com slash TGC and use the code TGC. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Now, how about some news? Bergara has a new competition rifle as part of their premier series of guns. It's called <laughs> the Premier Competition Rifle. <laughs> it's a basic name. I'll break down the specs. At the core, you have a Bergara barreled action with a heavy stainless barrel topped with a threaded muzzle, 26 inches in length. Beyond that, you have the Masterpiece Arms Competition chassis, which has some really nice features by itself. A Trigger Tech trigger, which is always a good thing. It takes AICS mags and it will be available in two different calibers, 6.5 Creedmoor and 6 Creedmoor. Both of them have a manufacturer suggested retail price of $24.99. I thought that sounded kind of high, so I went digging. The chassis itself retails for around a thousand bucks, which leaves about 1500 for the barreled action and trigger. Interestingly enough, if you wanted to buy a Bergara 6.5 barreled action by itself, provided it's in stock, you'd expect to pay around $1,100, at least in my research. However, it doesn't come with the same barrel as this. The trigger itself goes for about 150 bucks, so the pricing isn't too far off if you consider the cost of assembly, eh, sure. I've heard good things about Bergara rifles, but haven't had the chance to actually shoot one. I would be curious to hear what you guys have to say about them down in the comments below. We're moving on now to some shotgun news. Nemo Arms, best known for really nothing these days, but years ago, their Omen rifle, which was a 300 Win Mag semi-auto, they have released a new set of over-under shotguns. Certainly not what I expected, considering the last thing we covered from them on Halloween 2018 was the Monarch 9mm pistol, which is still listed as coming soon on their site, despite a year ago of video saying this is the final. Anyway, the shotguns, they're called NX, and honestly, they look super nice. The prices range from $27.99 for the NX standard, which has a color case hardened receiver, then goes all the way up to $37.99 for the NXS Sport with a case hardened receiver. There are some models in between. They all come with Negrini cases, a set of chokes, and depending on the model, various other trinkets. I am, however, skeptical that these are anything more than a Turkish shotgun rebranded with the Nemo name and some different engraving. I guess time will tell on that. Either way, on the surface, they look really nice. In other shotgun news, EAA is bringing in a couple new ones under their Akar Churchill line. There is the 220 Optics Tactical and the 620 Optics Tactical. They're basically the same gun with one of them being pump action and the other one being semi-auto. They're aimed at the home defense market specifically, and because of that, they have added features like a new fiber optic front sight, a ported breaching choke because breaching doors in your own house might be a thing, a pistol grip stock, and of course, a no-name Bobo red dot optic on top. Interesting that they put the optic on there and then added that nice front sight. Just take the optic off, it's junk. The MSRP is 561 for the semi-auto and 427 for the pump. And rounding out our shotgun segment this week is a weird yet interesting product. It's by a company called Better The Hunt and it's called the Insulated Shotgun Mitt. Let your brain run wild with pictures of what that might look like. Now, here it is. Essentially, what you have here is a pouch that you attach to your shotgun, either over the rib, kind of over the whole thing, or over the pump itself on those. 
and it's intended to keep your hands warm and dry. There's a hand warmer pocket on the inside and a shotgun shell holder on the outside. Honestly, it's a neat idea, except for the fact that gloves exist. <laughs> I can't see why you would want this over a glove, but I'm, I'm guessing that I'm missing something here. The part that you might find the most interesting is the price at 50 bucks. I guess if you don't like wearing gloves but need warm hands, this might make some sense. They also have them for rifles and bows and have the other mitt, which has an elastic band to hold it onto the gun. So you can have two. Can someone remind me why this is better than gloves? I'm struggling to see the benefit other than to take them off really quickly. Like, I guess if you hate gloves and you want to just take your hands out really quickly and get on the gun, sure. And for a hundred bucks for the pair, I'm betting you could probably get some really nice gloves for that. Curious to know your thoughts on this one, guys. And because I have nowhere else to put it, Magpul is finally shipping their pistol braces, the BTR and BSL. Pricing on those is right around 60 bucks. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. This week, our good guy with a gun is actually a woman. On April 16th at about 9.15 in the morning, a 27-year-old man forced his way into the home of a female in Lucerne Valley, California. For reference, that is south of nowhere in the Mojave Desert in Cali. According to the local sheriff, the suspect entered the home wielding a hammer and threatened to kill the woman. That's when she shot him. He was airlifted to a nearby hospital and his condition is currently unknown. Pretty open and shut case, if you ask me. Open and shut case, Johnson. I want to hear from you guys on this one. Was shooting the person threatening her life the right response? Is there a different way to handle it? I know how I feel, but I want to know how you guys feel. Let me know your thoughts down in the talky part. <laughs> GunTuber of the Week continues this week. If you don't know, GunTuber of the Week is a segment where I share a gun-related channel that by our standards, which are admittedly really high, puts out high-quality, entertaining, informative content on a regular basis. That being said, our GunTuber of the Week this time is Print, Shoot, Repeat. Just like last week, this channel is focused heavily on 3D-printed firearms and has some decent production values as well. What I appreciate is the information about what has worked and what hasn't, including showing the catastrophic failures. Here's a clip. What's up, you guys? Well, that worked. So we had a catastrophic failure there, as you saw in the video. We split right along the layer lines. If you're into 3D printed guns, you guys definitely need to go check out the link to that channel down in the description and get subscribed. And be sure to tell them TGC sent you. Sylvan Arms makes parts for your gun right here in the USA. Whether you're looking for a side folding adapter, or maybe a flared magwell, or maybe something to shoot nine out of your standard AR lower, they've got you covered. Sylvan Arms is an affordable alternative to many popular parts on the market right now. And to make it more affordable, use our code TGC10 over at sylvanarms.com to get 10% off your entire order. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys. This time, our questions are coming from YouTube. I asked for your questions, and you guys delivered. Our first question is from Matt Man, and he says, If you designed your own caliber, what would it be and why? I would love to see a caliber that uses a massive case, I don't know, like a 50 BMG or 20 mil, something huge, but has options for both super and subsonic projectiles. Sort of like a 300 blackout, but gigantic. I know Crom, Conditioned Red Ordnance Manufacturing, is working on the 500 blackout, but I'm talking about bigger than that. Derek Edge says, how awesome are guns? The answer is yes. Christian Beatty says, what is an area of firearms that really needs more freshness and innovation? Honestly, 
I'd love to see innovation in propellants, something that doesn't require a primer or powder to get the projectile downrange. Rail guns, those are awesome, they're cool as hell, but they're gigantic. I'd love to see some pushing in that direction. And rounding us out, Darkspire91 says, what's your bucket list gun? This question comes up all the time. A few people asked this similar question this week, so I figured I'd take it. I always say the FG42. That's still on my list, but I'd also like to shoot a minigun while carrying it around, just like walking around, just, yeah, brrr. that'd be rad, right? That'd be great. Everybody's seen that video of Grunk doing it, so I would love to try that too. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What kind of innovations would you guys like to see in the gun world? Sound off in the comments. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question of your own, jump over to theguncollective.com and send it our way. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to see an ad-free version, check us out on floatplane.com. And after you click the like button on this video, please do that. Be sure to hit the secret affiliate link down in the description. Go buy some coffee. That supports the channel and we really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. No robot this week. <laughs> Gotta keep you waiting. <laughs> yep, it's over. But don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.